want to live in a Europe where free countries trade with each other. Now, some of you here would have voted in that referendum back in 1975. Do you remember? There was a referendum on whether we should stay in a common market. Now, you have to be over the age of 55 to have voted in that, but I can tell one or two here do qualify. Um, but I'll bet there are people in this room who, like my mum and dad, voted back in 1975 to be in a common market because they were told it was about trade and it wasn't about politics. And it's turned out to be the most enormous lie, hasn't it? Because what we've now got is a European state, a European flag, a European anthem. And we've got the bully boys of Brussels who in the last week have actually brought down two governments. Mr. Papandreou swore, didn't he, in public as far as they were concerned, he used the R word, referendum. Total shock horror. And that the idea that Pat Andreo was going to give the Greeks a referendum meant that he had to go. Uh, Berlusconi, of course, has now also been forced from office, which makes me think it'll be one head of the leaving party. But there we are. <laughs> I mean, we've got these bully boys in Brussels. But don't misunderstand me. As far as we in UKIP are concerned, our enemy are not the European politicians. Because much as I dislike Barroso and Van Rompuy, much as I resent the fact that they are unelected, which seems to me to be monstrous, at least they're truthful, aren't they? You know, they actually tell us they want to create a United States of Europe. What this party is against are almost an entire generation of British career politicians who from that referendum in 1975 that I just mentioned to the present day have consistently told us an absolute pack of lies and who do their damnedest to make sure that we don't get the opportunity to have a say on these things. So the people we're against are the career politicians in this country. And frankly, with tomorrow being November the 11th, and here we are in sitting Hall tonight in remembrance an avenue or way, whichever it is. Um, I, 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 I think this. Those that went before us were prepared to risk and in many cases sacrifice everything they had so that we and the other countries in Europe could be free democracies. And what our politicians have done is to portray that sacrifice and shame on them. <laughs> so this party is the fight back. And it's not about being left wing or right wing. We're a party of all sorts of people. But the one thing we stand for is we believe in democratic British government that actually has the interests of this country and the people of this country and puts those interests first to the exclusion of absolutely all others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely vital that we do that. <laughs> oh, and some will tell you the BBC, my favourite organisation, worth every penny, aren't they? Uh, the BBC will tell you, oh, well, of course, UKIP, they just talk about Europe. Right. As if Europe is some sort of intellectual debate that is, that is had over here um, and is all about technical details of treaties. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about Europe, what we are now talking about is 75% of the laws that are made in this country every year. 75% of our laws now made somewhere else. You, the taxpayer, not just with the bailouts, but asked to pay a membership fee to this club of £45 million a day. Money, I would suggest, that could be rather better spent in this country in our current dire circumstances. Yeah. And all our politicians can do is in each election to promise us, well, don't worry, we realise this issue is beginning to matter, uh, and we're going to give you a referendum. And Blair did it, and Brown did it, 
And the Lib Dems, well, they sort of pirouette around the referendum question, changing their minds regularly. But don't forget, David Cameron did it, didn't he? Oh, David Cameron did it. Someone called him a liar. I wouldn't say anything like a that. A traitor. <laughs> Quite leak it, though. I mean, David Cameron in 2008 said, I give you this cast iron guarantee that if I'm Prime Minister, you will have a referendum on our future relationship with Europe. And then we saw, three Monday nights ago, <coughs> in the House of Commons, the first ever e-petition, which incidentally is a good idea, I think. A good way of getting young people involved in politics, a good way of getting important issues discussed on the floor of the House of Commons, and at the first opportunity, what does he do? He imposes a three-line whip on his MPs, as does Clegg, as does the Millipede, telling their MPs, <laughs> make, sure, make sure that whatever you do, you don't give the British people a say on their future. Well, to hell with them, because we are going to make a difference. This party has been around for a few years, and I was a founder member of it. In the early days, I have to say that being a Eurosceptic was a slightly minority sport. And my family and all my business colleagues thought I was rather off my chump. You know, I mean, surely Europe was just a common market and it wouldn't ever threaten us. But as the years have gone by, I think the public are beginning to see that everything you can have stood up and said and predicted has actually come true. And we managed to take this little party in 2009, in the European elections across this country, UKIP came second, beating the Lib Dems nationally and beating the governing Labour Party of the day. That was an incredible achievement for us, albeit it was done in the context of a European election. But as Ian mentioned, you know, up the road in, in uh, Mepham, where we never stood before, we got 34% of the vote. In the opinion polls, we're just 1% now behind the Liberal Democrats. And I think, you know, within the next month or two, we will overtake them. This party, ladies and gentlemen, is going places. This party is sincere. This party has belief. This party doesn't pretend that coming out of the EU will solve all of our problems. But this party is saying to you that unless we get ourselves free from the European Union, we can't begin to deal with the problems we've got in this country. We've got to get back control over our own lives. We've got to get back that democracy that our grandfathers actually fought for. We've got to get back a sense of self-respect and a sense of pride. Because frankly, I, I don't know about you, I find it humiliating that foreign judges now tell us <laughs> We have to keep people in this country who even helped the tube bombers a few years ago in London. But what are we sunk to, for goodness sake? It's time we stood on our own two feet. So we and you get are sincere. And we have got, I think, some very good solutions. Just one area, for example, is this whole question of immigration. I mean, it is unbelievable to think that since New Labour came to power in 1997, Nearly three million new people have settled in this country. Nothing like this has ever happened in the entire history of these islands. We are now the most overcrowded country in Europe by far. You only have to drive up, you know, around the motorways or <coughs> catch the Victoria Line in London to realise the extent of this overcrowding. And we are pursuing a course that will take the UK population to 70 million people by 2020. Labour actively encouraged this. The Lib Dems seem to think it's absolutely wonderful. But Cameron, at the last election, stood up and said, I will reduce immigration into Britain from hundreds of thousands a year to tens of thousands a year. Well, we've seen this week, haven't we, through his Home Secretary, Theresa May, that frankly, they haven't got the resolve, guts, or the backbone to do it. 